foot, Booty has consequences. <laughs> uh, guys, so I'm at Lowe's right now, and I just did a video. I don't know what video you watched last or anything like that, but I just did a video where I said the 545 Husqvarna couldn't be found for less than $600, all right, brand new at Lowe's and stuff. And I came in here just because I'm a chainsaw addict and, and I want to see what they got. I got a haircut and stuff, and so here I am. And then look what I found. All of the Husqvarna products are significantly reduced, all right? We got our Husqvarna 545. Bam! Was 639, now it's at 511. So, one has to ask themselves, why? Why? My guess is, it's because of Husqvarna announcing their whole new green initiative thing, and we're already seeing the stores trying to push out their stock because my guess is they're not going to they're not going to um, they're not going to be selling Husqvarna anymore. Just a guess. I don't know. Um, this could just be a sale to try and boost you know sales or whatever like normal, or it could be. Um, the first step in a short stumble downhill and end of all Husqvarna gas products. So with that being said, I guess it's time for me to go ahead and do the video that I've been thinking about doing. And here it is. Okay guys, so here it is. I've been um, wanting to do this video for a little while, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And um, so here we go. Uh, a handful of people on certain videos of mine, starting about three to maybe four weeks ago, um, they started saying things like, Husqvarna is going green, Husqvarna is not going to, you're not going to have support for that chainsaw that you're, <clears throat> you enjoy, steel chainsaws is the only place to be, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and I was like, what? No, what's going on? I don't, I don't even know what's going on. So I started researching it just a little bit, um, and well, it turns out that um, Husqvarna has officially made an announcement that they are no longer going to be producing gasoline products. Um, now, the extent of this is unknown to me. Um, when the deadline is, is again unknown to me. So... Chickanic, right? Chickanic did a video that explains it in much more detail than I'm going to explain it in. So if you want all those details, <clears throat> by for sure, check out her channel. And um, I'll put a link to her video in the description. She did a great video that was explaining all of the plant closures, um, uh, what the outline of what Husqvarna said that they're going to stop doing, how it is affecting her and her business. Um, so before anybody jumps to any kind of conclusions here, I think Chicanic is pretty great. And um, she, <laughs> like she needs anything from me, but she definitely gets my, I don't know, seal of approval because uh, she actually knows what she's doing. She's not just out there showing her cleavage <laughs> to get views. She actually is smart and knows what's going on, and I can't help but give full props and respect to her for that because there's a, there's a lot of the other stuff going on, and it makes guys like me extremely bitter to see a girl in a bikini get 400,000 views chopping wood within 20, 20 hours, you know, it's just like, oh, come on, man. But she actually knows what she's doing. And I definitely would recommend her to anybody that's wanting some advice on small engines. Um, so anyways, so please, good God, don't say anything negative about me mentioning her. <sighs> the, the, mm. Some people in the comments, man, they, they think they know and they just don't know anything. So the reality is, uh, though, with Chicanic, uh, she was quite bitter and negative about Husqvarna's move. 
understandable, completely understandable. All I because it's affecting her well livelihood. You know, she actually does this stuff for a living. Plus, she probably knows people that worked at these factories. She also knows a lot about the uh, lithi lithium ion batteries and how they are mined. And um, that's it is a big blanket that is thrown over the public's face about battery power okay but i'm not getting into that okay i i will say that it's potato potato gasoline and gasoline and oil versus battery um they're one or the other they're they're both just as bad for the environment as the other so uh, the idea that one is healthy for the planet is just stupid. But that doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter because we live in a world that's controlled by money. And um, the people who have money are always trying to figure out different ways to get more of money because they never have enough. I mean, Jesus, look at Jeff Bezos, you know. Look at Bill Gates, uh, you know, Elon Musk. Um, it is an insatiable lust for money and, um, and whatever. But I'm here to try and talk about Husqvarna's new move, which seems to be directly, hey, we're not producing any more gasoline products. We're going to produce electric products only and what that entails for us the end user first thing you got to look at number one right off the bat um them not making gasoline products does that mean they're still going to make mowers they're just not going to make the engines because like i have a husqvarna zero turn mower out there and it's got i think it's a kohler uh, motor on it. Okay, so Husqvarna is not making that product. Kohler is. Maybe it's a Briggs and Stratton. I don't know. But the point is, is Husqvarna is not making that product. They are buying it from Kohler or from uh, uh, Briggs and Stratton, whoever it is. So is Husqvarna still going to make products like that? What are they saying exactly whenever they say we're not going to make gasoline products anymore. Okay? I don't know. No, I don't think anybody knows at this point. At this point, I don't think even Husqvarna knows. They just are making announcements probably to stir some buzz and see how the world reacts. All right? Uh, number two, are they just going to simply drop all of their uh, gasoline products and not give them support anymore? I don't know. Um, I, I, I do know, according to Chicanic and my own personal experiences, um, getting Husqvarna parts can be quite difficult right now. Um, and so maybe they're not going to support. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, I do know from my motorcycle experience, there was always kind of this gentle, gentleman's agreement, I think, that the manufacturers had that whenever they discontinued uh, a product, they still had to supply parts for that product for 10 years um, after its demise. So maybe we'll be in a situation like that. And like I said, I don't know if that's a law or if it's just a gentleman's agreement. It seems to me like they're, they, they should be able to quit producing whatever they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it's probably more of a gentleman's agreement to continue to provide parts for uh, uh, certain outdated models. Um, so uh, are we going to see a complete stoppage of product support? I don't know. I don't know. Um, this video is not doing a whole lot of good for you guys that have questions. We're just talking it out. We're just talking it out. All right. Uh, number, number three. All right. Where does this leave the market? Now, we'll save that for number four. Number three. 
electric power isn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I like my gas products as well. I like the way they sound. I like the way they smell. I, I like them, okay? Um, however, I hear it all the time. And of course, I'm, I'm a nicer guy than I give myself credit for. Because there are about a million times in my life, almost during every day of the week, that I could look at people and go, you are a stupid son of a bitch. You know nothing, yet you think that you know it all. Okay? A lot of people could say that about me in certain arenas anyways. But, so what I hear is that, I mean, and it's just parroted over and over and over again. A battery chainsaw will never, never take the place of one of these big gas chainsaws. Ah, oh, shut the hell up. Why do you think that? Why? Why do you think that? Because we haven't figured out how to make a battery saw as powerful as this one and be the same weight? Well, that's only because we haven't had to. All right? That's it. Innovation is driven by necessity. Okay? And what the EPA is doing to us is they are making it necessary for companies to switch to battery. Whenever that happens, we're going to get 70, 80, 90, 100 cc power battery technology. The only reason we don't have it right now is because there's no necessity. There's no need. So quit thinking that battery will never be as good as gas in power to weight ratio. All right? It will. It'll be better. It it will. That's <laughs> uh so there used to be this project I I probably still is is still going on. I think it was MIT that did it. Uh maybe it was uh University of Boston. But I think it was MIT. MIT always had this standing competition that took place every year to make the smallest motor that you could possibly make. And this, this, this has been happening since like the 60s or something like that, right? And it started out, you know, people were making electrical motors and then they got smaller and 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 smaller, and smaller, smaller right? And then some time, at some point, some dude, out of the blue, he came up with this different type of electric motor that no one, in their, no one had ever thought about in their minds whatsoever. Um, and what he came up with were little tiny energy-producing diodes, sort of. I mean, tiny, like... Almost microscope size, you got to see them. But they produced power. And uh, so he still was in the competition, and bam, you know. And, and so what he did was his closest competitor was, you know, let's say a motor that big. And in that size, he could fit a 1,000 of his motors. All right? So I don't know the ins and outs of that challenge, but I do know that it exists, and what drove it was the innovation, this competition uh, that, that made people think outside the box. Electric, we could go on all day about whether or not we should have it. That's not going to change. We go on all day about uh, the problems with it. Little slave children mining lithium. <laughs> you know, we could go on all day talking about that. The problem is, is it's not going to change. So anyways, battery power and electric power, if Tesla, the car company, has proven anything, what they have proven is, in the same size package, you can get tremendous power out of electric and battery power. I mean, look at the, the Teslas, the new Mustang, I think it's called Mustang... What do they call it? The Mustang SUV, the electric Mustang. You can get that thing with like 1,500 horsepower, you know? So 
and it's in the same package as other vehicles. So we can do this with electric power. We can get a 90cc class saw um, with electric power and be like, holy shit, yeah. And just like a tank of fuel, whenever that battery runs out, you grab another battery and you put it in there. Um, so it can be done. Stop saying, stop it. Stop saying that it'll never happen because if you're the kind of person with such a closed mind that you think that we can't get electric power to be as good as gasoline power, then you don't know shit. Ugh. I just had this conversation with somebody um, yesterday and he started spouting off how long he's been on the planet. And I said, I don't care how long you've been doing this. It doesn't mean you know shit. All right? I, I, old people. Just because you're old, it doesn't mean you have a vast amount of knowledge. I've known a, a lot of young idiots. And nine times out of ten, what they, do, what they do is they grow into old idiots. <laughs> so... It's not like, uh, <laughs> it's not like um, just because you're old, all of a sudden you're intelligent and you have a vast wealth of knowledge. No, 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 no. For the past 20 or 30 years, the, you've been doing things the exact same way that you did back in 1962, all right? And I've been reading and I've been learning this world of knowledge that's put on the internet. I have respect for my elders, absolutely. But if you're a jackass, you're a jackass. And um, stop thinking that you know something simply because you're old. Okay? Um, I mean, it just, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, my son and daughter outpassed my mathematical capabilities whenever they were like in sixth grade. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, <laughs> you know? So anyways, the final thing to talk about here is what this is going to do to our market. Um, well, for one, I definitely think that Husqvarna is just the first, all right, okay? Uh, Steel is going to do it. Um, Echo is going to do it. Um, maybe some other. Maybe Zenoa is going to step in and be part of American market. I don't know. I don't know. And I know a lot of this stuff would be owned by Husky. But unless something changes dramatically, which I don't think it's going to, right? Unless something dr some dramatic change happens, where we are going is electric power. Gasoline and diesel is going to be a thing of the past. Now, it might take us 20 or 30 years. I don't know. But, yeah, electric is stepping in. The powers that be are saying this is the clean way to do it, and we're going to save the planet. Okay. Uh, and, and, and us as little people... Just buying the products, we can't do a damn thing. So, all of them are going to go electric powered at some point. But, for the time being, let's say five years, right? Maybe ten years. Husqvarna, if they do actually move over and they no longer offer gasoline products, let's, let's stick with chainsaws specifically, right? What does this look like for the market? What's that going to do? I think that it, it, you know, Echo is poised to take over that market, sh market share right away. Boom. Okay. Okay. Husqvarna is no longer making gas products. Well, that's okay. Our third best-selling gasoline chainsaw is going to just, boop, step right in their position. And you'll see a lot more Echo products. Um being used professionally that's what i think will happen uh maybe everybody will switch over to steel and everything will end except for steel you know but steel is already making the push as well 
It's not just Husqvarna. Steel is really pushing their battery power. Really, really pushing it. And uh, so maybe Echo will become the number one. You know? Or maybe the big two, Echo and, or I'm sorry, Husqvarna and Stiel, maybe they will actually immediately begin producing awesome electric stuff. You know? But the way I like, I'm, I'm seeing it right now, is Husqvarna stepping out of the gas uh, chainsaw business tells me Echo is poised and ready, and they're going to jump right in and claim that spot. And so what will, if this happens, what we'll likely see is uh, new models from Echo um, to fill the void where that Husqvarna has left. Um, so what I've been hoping for for a long time is a new Echo 60cc saw um, to replace the 620 or the 590 Timberwolf. Give us a new six, uh, 60cc saw to fill that slot. As much as I like the Timberwolf and the 620, uh, they are dated, they're big, they're heavy, and um, uh, I would love to see Echo come up with a new 60cc saw that falls right in line with their 7310 and their 4310 chainsaws. They're going to have to do that with the 50cc lineup as well. I know that they've already got a 50cc saw, but it is a clamshell saw, and it's not going to be considered a professional saw by anyone. It's that that hole is still there, and um, it might take them a couple years to fill all these holes, but it would be cool to see them be able to step up. The other pos possible option is Husqvarna might just say the name brand Husqvarna is not making gasoline anymore, but Husqvarna owns uh, Red Max. I, do they own Zenoa? They might own Zenoa. I'm not certain about that. But I know that they own Red Max outright. They own Yonsa Red. They own Poulon. They own Partner. They own, uh, I think, Home Light. I think. They own McCulloch. Uh, they own all of these brands. They could just switch over their gasoline products into that brand. I don't know. However it goes down, however it's going to be, the changes in this field are real, and we're not going to be able to stop them. So just go with the flow, you know? Am I worried about it? No, not at all. I mean, I don't, I don't, not at all. I have enough gasoline chainsaws to last me five or six lifetimes <laughs> you know uh, and parts availability um, will always be there because the Chinese companies will step up and I uh, I can hear it right now I can hear y'all right now immediately typing in there oh but the Chinese quality is crap blah 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 the only reason the Chinese quality is lower quality than German or Swedish uh, quality built things is because Chinese is selling, the, the Chinese market is selling to consumers that want cheap products. That's it, right? As soon as the market evolves to where the good products are no longer being produced in Germany, in Switzerland, or Sweden, Sweden, right? Then China will jump in and grab that market and say, okay, we will produce the high-end product. It's not because they can't make it. It's because of right now, they know if you're going to buy a $300 uh, steel cylinder all right you're going to get it from steel made in germany you're not going to get it from china you're not you that market doesn't exist for them but whenever steel stops making 
$300 cylinders, China will step in there and they will make them. So now little bits and twigs and things here and there, like what Chicanic was complaining about, like the throttle and stuff. We may always have a problem with things like that. Um, so the situation is real. Our fears and concerns, I think, are, well, they're our own problem, okay? Uh, things will happen. We will adjust, and we'll just have electric chainsaws, you know? We still have to be able to cut up these trees. We have to be able to cut them up. Now... Will we suffer for a time? Likely. I mean, look at the American muscle car. The American muscle car had a real heyday from... <sighs> People like to start... The, the muscle car era really didn't start until around 1965. I think maybe 1964. It started with the Pontiac um, GTO. But in reality... It was already in its fledgling time in the early 50s. You know, people were doing all kinds of stuff. They were hot riding, riding their vehicles. And it just really developed until when, whenever the factory started. The factories started producing these hot rods. was like around 1965. And it lasted until 1972. And then, bam! <laughs> We're done here. The government is like, no more muscle cars, right? They, fuel crises, uh, the EPA stepped in, oh, this and that, catalytic converters, oh, too much fuel, oh, right? And so there was a time whenever the consumer was really suffering because they were like, oh, my God, the glory days, the glory days of whenever we could just go buy a 400 horsepower um, Chevy Nova. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, uh, oh, those glory days are gone, and they'll never come back. Well, they did. They came back with absolute vengeance. Look at the Camaros, the Mustangs, the um, Challenger, Charger, those vehicles that are being produced and have been produced for the last 20 years. Uh, so the muscle car came back and it was different. Instead of getting eight miles to the gallon, you were getting 28 miles to the gallon. I swear I have driven them. It was a Mustang. Uh, my buddy had one. I took it on a trip, a road trip, of, I don't know, about 300 miles or something like that. And he would tell me that he got 28 miles a gallon. I was like, you're full of shit. You're not getting 28 miles a gallon with that thing. 28 miles a gallon. So anyways, it will happen for us and our chainsaws. And they will be better. It's just going to take, take a little while. You know? But if you're one of those guys that are saying... They will never be able to come up with an electric saw to do the job of a 90cc saw. You're full of shit. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You absolutely don't know what you're talking about. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Because necessity drives innovation. And whether it's right or wrong, the EPA and the environment and politics, everything is driving us towards electric power being our new necessity. And whenever that becomes our necessity, that's when, that's when the innovation will start. I still can't wait to go to a chainsaw race and they have a class for the fastest electric saw. I can't wait for that because it's going to blow your minds. Electric has full capability of extreme and excessive power. You just don't like it as much. I don't either. I don't either. 
But I'm telling you, man, I've seen electric cars with so much torque that they'll go 60 miles an hour, and if you floor it, they'll spin out on you and you crash. Uh, it's Electric is real, and we can get real performance out of electric. Um, it's just we haven't needed to because we got gas. So, yeah, I look forward to the day whenever we get a racing class that is electric only. And, you know, maybe several, you know. This one you can only have 24 volts. This one you can have as much as 48 volts, you know, and stuff like that. This one only a single motor is allowed. Here we can have quad motors. The realities of what the human brain can innovate, it's, it's exponential, you know. We've literally landed people on the moon. We have literally landed vehicles on Mars, right? Is it Mars or is it Jupiter that we actually have a rover that is like controlled remotely and is driving around on a different planet, okay? And you tell me that they'll never be able to build a 90cc class saw with electric power? You are full of shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, just completely know nothing. Uh, and I know that that is just insulting as can be, but I'm still a little bit miffed about chatting with that old man yesterday, and he really thinks he knows so much. He's, it's just like, Oh, no, no. Speaking in absolutes, and that'll never happen. Blah, 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 blah. He also thinks I know what I'm thinking inside my head. And it's like, no, you don't know what I'm thinking. But the reality is, is whenever we start to innovate with electric power and really, really start to innovate, well, look what Tesla did. Look what Tesla did. They put a motor on every single wheel of the car, and... They have a mode called Insane Mode, and it's like the fastest production vehicle ever made. And it's electric. And it's luxurious. I mean, have you ever sat in one? They're amazingly luxurious. They're just freaking phenomenal. Um, and you tell me that we can't make a good chainsaw out of electric? It's not true. Not true. Not true. I can remember in the late 80s, I was getting stereo speakers, and I, you know, I really liked my sound stuff and everything, and uh, those exact same speakers that back then you would have had to have paid $200 for one of these subwoofers, you can get now made in China or Taiwan or whatever, or Thailand, or, uh, and, and you can get it for $8. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same thing. It's the stuff that 30 years ago, we would have been like, that is high quality, good stuff. And you'd have to pay 200 bucks for it. Seriously. Now, you can get it for $8. Eight. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So, everything has its day. It just may, may take a little time to get there. And it's been a long video, but hopefully you've enjoyed what I've had to say. And if you're one of the people saying that this will never happen, stop it. Learn to put a muzzle on your way of thinking that is um, so negative, right? And just be like, you know, they have really come up with some crazy stuff. And um, we used to get everywhere with a horse. And now, their jetpacks are real. You know, now, there's technology where people are coming up with ways to incorporate magnets into the road and the car never touches the road. Um, so, we went from horse and buggy to where we're at now in 120 years. Yeah. In the early 1900s, we were exclusively horse and buggy. 
and in 120 years, we're doing what we're doing now. It's, you tell me we can't come up with an electric chainsaw? Pish posh applesauce.